Good evening, we're back and welcome to another live stream from a home in Italy, live from beautiful Abruzzo in Italy. Great to be back. Sorry I missed you last week. We had a, a little bit of a hectic start to the week and uh, obviously we had our, our fantastic uh, tour uh, towards the end of the week. So did, I'm very sorry that I missed it. And tonight we've got the Gremlins back as well because my video camera has been freezing. There's been a few different things happening. So if it does happen, Bear with me, uh, and I will come back on, but uh, it has been freezing a little bit leading up to this, so we'll see if we can get through it. Uh, hopefully, there's going to be a few of you in here tonight. Again, I can't see any numbers for some strange reason of how many people's uh, how many people, so I don't even know if anybody's in. So I'm actually waiting for Tony to start putting uh, a few things up. So tonight's live stream, prepare for your Abruzzo viewing trip. So it's going to be full of uh, a couple of different... Um, uh, webinar, uh, previous webinars that I've done. Um, I'm going to sort of mix a couple of things together. There's a few important things that I think uh, I think is good. We're going to do some map work. So I'm going to be telling you where you should be looking, how to split our brood soap into into different areas and that kind of thing. Uh, so we're going to be doing a little bit of that. And uh, yeah, depending on time, we may go on to another subject to touch on that I'm going to go on to, uh, then I'm going to go on to later. But uh, yeah, we'll see how time goes. We've also got tonight, don't forget, we have our... Uh, uh, what's it called again, Tony? Can't remember the name of it. Domenico and Tony's tongue twisting trials. <laughs> the <ba> and with sound effects. Um, oh, there we go. Told you we had the. Told you we had the, the the gremlins in, didn't I? Tonight it's going to be it's going to be one of those nights, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be one of those nights where it just keeps freezing and that sort of thing, and it always freezes just at that point where I've sort of got that you know goofy look in my face or something like that. So so there's going to be a few points <laughs> where it freezes. Just bear with me if it does happen. It's definitely going to happen tonight. I can I can already tell because of uh, uh, what's been going off. But anyway, just bear with me and bear with me, and we'll get through it as quick as possible. So as I was saying, we've also got Domenico and Tony's tongue twisting trials, which I'll tell you about in a minute. For those of you who don't know what they are, that's a bit of fun that we like to have on these Tuesday evenings. And what else do I want to say? The tour group they were absolutely fantastic. Paul's saying, Dave, did you get my email on, on the one property? Not sure, Paul. I'm not. I, I'm up to date on email, so unless you sent it in the last hour or two, then you need to resend because uh, I'm, I'm completely up to date on emails. Um, okay, so last week's tour group, they were absolutely fantastic. We had a brilliant time, absolutely brilliant time. Great to spend, uh, great to spend some time with them as well. It's we had a, um, we were lucky with the weather. The second day, don't know what's happening to my screen. Tony, are you moving my screen around or is it me? I seem to be moving to all different parts of the. Why is it this happening? Anyway, there you go. Oh, that's the one that I wanted. Anyway, fantastic tour. We had a great. Uh, we were very lucky with the weather. It has been fantastic, but, but typical of of March time, marzo pazzo as they call it. It was beautiful one day, and then the following day, not so great. But what a fantastic group! We had thirty five people, which uh, which was quite good fun taking them around. Uh, all the different places. This is uh, in Pacentro. We filled the, the streets of Pacentro because when we're seeing houses, we tend to, to split up. So people are walking between one house and another, all guided along by uh, Tony joined us and Domenico. And uh, yeah, we had a, an absolutely brilliant day. I think we've got some more. Where are the other folks? Oh, what am I doing here? Tony's all going wrong. Everything's going wrong tonight. Here we go. Let's start again. Okay, so this is the group in Popoli where we started the, started the time off, uh, the, the, the tour. We had Popoli, and then this is just outside of Rayano, which completely took over a bridge and, uh, and blocked that up. <laughs> blocked that up. Really, it's an absolutely stunning area where we're all stood here, um, just literally between uh, Vittorito and Rayano. Um, then we moved on to Pacentro, where Pacentro Pete uh, is from. Unfortunately, Pete is still in Montenegro, so uh, but he's going to come and see us again. Uh, he's going to he's going to come and see the next group in April. I think he's back in town uh, again. This was Pacentro, and then we finished off the first day in Sulmona. Obviously, the famous uh, confetti there in Sulmona, and then the weather changed, started to get dark. But doesn't uh, Sulmona look fantastic? Even when it's uh, even the weather's not uh, not so great. So that was a fantastic tour. We really I'm going to get rid of this Tony. This is because things are going to 
start going wrong, I think. Okay, okay. So yeah, we had a fantastic time on the uh, on the tour. It really was a good one. So just remember, when it comes to the tour dates, there may be some. If I can just take over the screen a second, Tony, there may be some coming available for April. Uh, there may be two spaces um, and possibly one space or two spaces for May. I will let you know in the next uh, next few days about that. So the autumn tour day is 26th and 27th of September, 24th and 25th of October, 7th and 8th of November. So the booking forms are on the website now. Just go to www.ahominitaly.com and click on tours. And then you will be able to, I think October is, uh, October is, is, pretty much full but um i think there's still maybe four or five spaces but we have changed the november one because originally it was the end of november we've now moved that to the early part of november um to the 7th and 8th so make sure you go on there and have a look uh, and come and join us on one of these tours they are fantastic if i do say so myself what else have i got to say tony is just is holding things up on a little screen uh oh yes yes i better not forget this one uh so our friends at rentinabruzzo at gmail.com contact them if you're looking for rental properties out here in abruzzo um, they've got, I think I mentioned last week, uh, we've had a, a or they've had a, a few bookings for this one, but they've got a fantastic apartment right in the center of Sulmona, along with others in other towns as well, including Rayano. Um, completely forgot all the rest of them, but there's Vittorito, there's uh, Rayano, uh, obviously Sulmona, and also in Pacentro at the moment as well. So if you are looking for rental properties, get in touch with them. Rent in Abruzzo, just look at the, check the spelling though, because that's the important thing. Rent in Abruzzo at gmail.com. And if uh, if for any reason it doesn't come through or shows us a wrong email, there's a good chance you may have spelt it wrong. Just contact us at info at home in Italy .com and we'll, uh, we'll, happen, we'll happily pass you on to them as well. I'm hoping to get a few photographs soon so I can show you some of the properties. Um, and our friends are hopefully going to be joining us as well on uh, on uh, on a webinar very soon. A uh, couple of other things that I want to tell you next week. It's obviously Easter this weekend. Can't wait for that. Absolutely love Easter in Italy because it's just all about eating and drinking, which is pretty much like every other weekend here in. Uh, um, there's another. There's another. Look, look at that for a free. Why can't it freeze when I'm looking sort of you know normal? Let me see if I can get this going again. Just bear with me one second. And then as if by magic, I appear again. Did you notice that other screenshot? That was that was before I started. So you even get some backstage stuff tonight. It's happened again, hasn't it? Tony, we're having a nightmare tonight. I told you this would happen, didn't I? I did say, Tony, can you hear me still? Just give me a nod. Yeah, he's giving me a thumbs up. So I know you guys can hear me. So you're going to have to bear with me when it comes to the, uh, to, to the, uh, to the, to the uh, video because it is going to be hit and miss today i can just tell that but there you go we'll do as much as we can to keep it uh, keep it going as usual i also want to tell you before we get started on the subject or before we get started on a certain thing that we like to do on a tuesday evening that a property has come back on the market that was sold um a few months ago unfortunately things have fallen through for the for the for the people that were going to buy it in uh in, in the us it's a fantastic property so I've, it's only just happened now i've just been told um sort of in the last or just before we came on air so i want to just try and share my screen if i can this is where everything again is going to go uh, is going to definitely go wrong which it is doing for me already let me see if i can get this done share screen let's take this over onto this side if this works here we go let's see if we can Share my screen. Here we go. Hopefully you can see this, but this is the property. I don't know if any of you can remember this one. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Um, but this is a fantastic one. It's it's listed on YouTube as, as if it was sold. It's listed at 39K plus fees and taxes and everything else. But if I remember rightly, the total price, including everything, is going to be about 47,000 euros. It's a fantastic property. So... If you're interested in it, I've, I've stuck. I've stuck again. Look, I'm stuck. But if you are interested in this property, get on YouTube straight away, and I would really, really strongly advise um, getting this place because it is absolutely fantastic. Let me just give you a quick. 
Let me get rid of me. Here's obviously walking around the town as we do. You maybe remember the, the property once I get to it, once I've finished talking. Let me see. Even the internet's going slow now. Every, everything's just happening, isn't it, tonight? <laughs> Tony, can't you be doing? He's, he's supposed to be the producer, and he can do absolutely nothing. Look, even YouTube's crashed. Everything's crashed. We've just got that little uh, little circle going around that we all know and love. I can't do anything whatsoever. It just seems to be. Right, so this is the property. I don't know if you can remember this one. Um, the property is in, in the middle of the screen with the with the open doors. It's just an amazing place. And what it does have, which I'm going to try and show you, is a veranda at the back that just has unbelievable views. The condition is great. Um, let me see if I can... Oh, it's working a little bit now, just to give you a little bit of the condition of the property. Obviously, the bathroom there. Uh, let me show you a little bit of when you first walk in. Here we go. So the property is great condition. They're leaving the furniture as well, and there's some great furniture in the, in the kitchen area. So they are leaving. That's a brilliant property. And then when you get to the back of it, just wait while you see this. <laughs> I always say that, don't I? Just wait while you see this one. Uh, but this veranda has just got, and this wasn't a particularly nice day, but just look at those views. Look how amazing those views are. This place is fantastic, and it is back for sale. So go on to, I wonder if I can, let me see if I can link this. Should have probably done this earlier as well. See if I can put it in the chat. Let's see, here's chat. Can I get on the chat? Here we go. It's not giving me any reason way to put it on, onto the chat. Usually I can. Oh, there you go. I can't. Sending message is currently not available. I will. Anyway, just don't miss it. Go on to the uh, go on to the, the 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 YouTube channel and just take a look at it. It is it will be under the sold properties. It's uh, listed at thirty nine. It's in Predsa. Um, and get in touch. Again, we deal with everything on a first come first served basis. Uh, in total, the complete total uh, fees and taxes with absolutely everything all included, our fees, notary fees, everything else is about 47k. So uh, so yeah, just, uh, just take a look at that one because it really is a fantastic one. Okay, so I am actually thinking, I don't know what you guys think, and obviously I would hope that I won't be having the nightmare that I'm having tonight, but I am thinking about doing some sort of webinars where we go through a few properties and that kind of thing, maybe some ones that we're getting, um, um, I don't know, some a few sort of properties that I think should have sold and maybe didn't sell or if any any sort of come back on the market or any new ones. I am thinking about uh, doing sort of a, a session on that and going through some of the videos. If you like that idea, uh, do let me know because I would be interested to hear that. The other thing that I want to show you, what I'm thinking about doing as well, once I get this back on the screen, is getting some of you guys to send me some photographs in because it's always nice to see a few photographs, a bit like this. And I received one today uh, from Monica. And uh, I'm giving her a mention because it really put a smile on my face. Just look at that. <laughs> Monica, if you're watching, I'm sure she, I'm sure she will be um, because she is a, a regular on here. Uh, thank you so much <laughs> for doing this. She's going to bring it out to me, she said. Uh, but it really, really cheered me up when I, when I saw this. So, Monica, if you are watching, and which I'm sure you will be, thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to meeting you and getting this great, uh, this great jumper. I just hope it fits. Do you reckon it'll fit, Tom? Does it look around about my size? Yeah, he's got a smirk on his face. Anyway, thank you so, so much. And I just that put me in the mood then just to see another few uh, photographs. Uh, this was sent from Liz, who was on the tour last week, and she was heading down south towards um uh towards Puglia and uh she stopped off at Vasto which is one of my favorite beach resorts here in uh, in beautiful Abruzzo and sent me this photograph and said Dave Vasto is stunning um so I just thought I'd share that with you and then a quick mention to John who sent me a photograph I think he saw one of the photographs that I sent saying spring in Abruzzo and he sent me a message saying spring in Wisconsin and sent me this 
So, uh, <laughs> so I thought it would be quite fun if a few of us, you know, if you decide to send a few photographs in wherever you are in the world, whatever you're doing, especially when you come out here as well. It's always great to see things like that. We'll add it to the, we'll add it to the, uh, to the show. I'm sure people, I'm sure people won't mind. Okay. So I think that is, I think I've got rid of all the screen shares. We'll see what happens now, Tony, but, uh, but there you go. So tonight's subject. Oh, I forgot about that. Tony, it's that time. It's that time. We need to. It's 7.15 already. So any, any of you that don't know, we like to do Domenico and Tony's tongue-twisting trials. What's that all about? I hear you ask. Well, I will tell you. Tony is learning Italian, and, uh, and, and he's doing quite well. I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. He's doing quite well. Uh, and Domenico wants to learn English. So every Tuesday, what do we do? I give them a famous quote from a film that Tony has to read in Italian. Um, basically, you've got to try and guess, but you can't guess while Domenico has done the English version later in the show. So without, with further, without further ado, what do I say? Without further ado, let's bring Tony on. And he doesn't know what he's going to be saying yet. I'm going to be sending it shortly in text. Let's bring him on. He loves to be, uh, he loves to be on here. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I love being on here, Dave. You do. You do. He looks yeah. forward to this every single week. Oh, I'm he asked, to look, wait for the... He asks me the same question every time. Is it a long one? Is it going to take me a while? Right, are you ready, Tony? <laughs> Is everybody ready? But no guessing, anybody. No guessing until Domenico has done it. You've got to listen Fantastic. to Tony. Tony's brilliant Italian. It's not too long, this one, but oh, there might be a couple of words that might throw you a little bit. Oh, I'm going right. to text him the famous. So this is a famous quote from a famous, famous, famous film. Oh, yeah. Every week people have got it. I'm trying to get people, but I think people are going to get this one tonight as well. But as I said, everybody, no guessing until Domenico's do it. Let's send Tony. <laughs> you ready? You've got five seconds to study, Tony. Oh, oh. Fantastic. Does it come through? Yeah. I'm just trying because my screen's rubbish. But, um, Don't use that as well. Has it, has it come through? He's just playing yeah. for more time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Totally. Playing for more time. Three, four, five. You ready, Tom? So in okay. your very best Italian, okay. give us the first quote. Gli farò un offerta che non potrà rifiutare. Actually, you, you've done very well there. I, I, yeah. I thought there would be two words. The, especially yeah. the first one, because, yeah, that's a strange pronunciation, the first yeah. one. I'll tell you why later. Um, somebody saying, love the hoodie, Tony. I think it just looks like, <laughs> don't you think it just looks like a ruffian? <laughs> Is that a word? Yes. Hey. <laughs> Jean-Michel Pasqua. But that, you did pretty good there. So one more time. Well, thanks. Off you go. Gli faro una foto che non potrà rifiutare. He didn't do bad, did he, folks? He didn't do bad tonight whatsoever. So no guessing. Wait for Domenico to come on later, and then we'll do it. Okay, so I need to start screen sharing again. So this is where things are going to start going wrong, but we need to do this to start on about our subject tonight, which we have now done nearly 20 minutes, and I've not even started it, but uh, but there you go. I hope you enjoy these things. We certainly enjoy them. Or are we doing? Are we, are we having too much fun? Should we start being a bit more serious? Let me know. Some people will, will say definitely. Okay, so what I want to talk about is I want to talk about preparing when you come out here. I want to go through a few subjects, which we have done before, um, but I do think that it is uh, quite important that um, um, that you, you consider a few things before you come out here and before you get stuck into viewing properties and all that kind of thing. So the first thing somebody... <laughs> we love Tony. He, he gets to choose what gets put up on here. I can see him in the background going like this. Shocking. Somebody else is saying that they love the hoodie. No, we've already had that one, Tony. Anyway, so there's a few things that I want you to be aware of before you come out here. We're going to discuss uh, discuss these tonight. So I'm going to go straight to, let's let's see some of the simple things first, not, not the snow. How to get here. Lots of people say to me, when we come to our brood, so, I, I, I don't know what it is. Um, I, I don't know how prepared some people are, but I do tend to find that a lot of people recently are just sort of booking to come over, and then it's like, oh, how do we get from where to where? So I thought we'd do the basics to start with. When you get, if you land in Rome, um, 
or I would say Rome and, and also some other some other um, airports, some southern airports, but mainly from Rome. So if you're coming into Fiumicino, there are a number of coaches that do come over to uh, um, – <laughs> Josh is saying, Domenico, it is going to be good. So you've already got it then, I'm guessing, Josh. Anyway, these are the options to get from the coach from uh, Rome Fiumicino over to Pescara. Now, some people do say, um, <laughs> people are making me laugh tonight. I'll tell you this stuff. We're good, uh, should, should I embarrass? I don't know whether I should embarrass Stacey, uh, Brad, with this story. Maybe, maybe, maybe later, maybe later. Or we'll save it for when you're on Meet the Home Buyers. Anyway, I'm getting put off now. Tony's putting me off. So, between Rome and Pescara, or Rome and, and most parts of Abruzzo, I would suggest the coach uh, more than the train, um, purely because it takes a lot. I mean, the tra I've never never done the train ride. It's supposed to be fantastic, uh, but it's much quicker using the bushes, uh, bu bushes, buses, because the trains go up and over the mountain, which sounds great, and it will be great, but these buses pick you right up outside the terminal. So if you're coming into Rome Fiumicino or Rome Ciampino, Go onto these websites. So you've got Defonso, which is the, the, the people at the top um, uh, top left. You've got Clickbooks, Clickbus, Flixbus, and Pronto Bus. I think there may be others, but these are the four main ones. Their websites are dead easy to use. And these will stop outside the terminal of the, the outside the, the arrivals um, in Fiumicino and some of them in Ciampino as well. Just make sure you put the right airport. And they will bring you to, I think they go to Avizzano, uh, they stop off in about three or four places along the motorway line on the way to, to Pescara. And then more importantly, they take you right to the center uh, of Pescara. Some of them go to the airport as well, but that is, if you go to the center where the railway station, then there's another bus that can give you a short trip to the, uh, to the airport. So these are the best ones. So make notes of these, everybody, um, because I do get asked quite a lot, and I must put some of these on, on our website as well for people to see. Obviously, there's the, the train. This is the train, everybody, you know, if you didn't know what one of those is. Uh, and this is, apparently, this is one of the trains that this is the kind of scenery you get. So it should be quite nice on the train, but I think it, it stops at a, quite a number of stops, and it does take a lot longer than the, the, the buses the the buses cost around about 18 euros uh for the trip so it's very very little i've i've uh, i've frozen again I've, I've frozen in that uh in that pole so yeah it doesn't doesn't cost much to uh um to come over here on the coach but i also understand that it doesn't cost much to come over on the train as well but i would suggest coming on the coaches just because it's so much easier the other option depending where you're coming from in the world is to use Europe's favourite <laughs> carrier, I actually like uh, uh, like Ryanair to be honest with you. But they do direct flights from Milan, Milan Bergamo uh, uh, in Milan to Pescara, and they do that daily, I believe. So you could also fly into Milan um, and then pick up a really cheap flight from Ryanair to uh, from sorry uh, Milan um into pescara so that is another option for you so it depends depends what you prefer but they are the best ones but i would say if you're coming into rome then definitely definitely um use the coaches in my opinion it's just just so much easier for you and they, they are really really good so uh that's how to get here so make notes of that and remember that and that should help you what i want to rental car costs kelly is saying uh rental car costs it varies. It, it does really vary, but you can che always check the prices at, at the Rome airports, but then also you can check prices at the airport in Pescara and also at the train station uh, in Pescara. So it, it, it really does vary. I've, I've heard somebody recently that only paid 120 euros for the week. I've heard some people that paid 300 odd for the week. It, it does vary a lot. Unfortunately, since COVID, car uh, rental prices have just gone absolutely ridiculous. But that's that's just the way it is. Okay, so there's a few things now that I want to talk to you about when it comes to getting prepared lots of people we've, we've gone through this uh before but lots of people seem to be in a huge rush to um to get over here and get a property you know it's, it's got to be it's got to be quick because it's everything seems to be going all the rest of it uh, and and i do think brad saying cost us 300 for, for eight days rental car and i do think there is a there is a boom happening at the moment it definitely is um but there's still plenty of properties and there's still, you know, plenty of areas and everything else. I mean, you know, we, 
I'm happy to say that that we're, we are uh, very busy. And Domenico, who looks after the properties, uh, and, and Enos at one side of the mountain, then obviously we've got Claudio at this side of the mountain, and they are finding some fantastic properties, and we are very, very busy. But lots of people say it seems like you're selling everything, and everything that comes in you're selling. But when you actually think of the numbers, you know, it, it's, a, it's a small percentage of – I don't want people – stressing out and thinking they've got to get something now and then making mistakes that's the last thing that you want to be doing i understand people getting excited and they see a property that they really like and especially the video properties they tend to create but i also see uh i've stuck again look always in that position i also see a number of people that are contacting me after after the the after the event almost where people have have gone they've gone with with other agents uh, or sometimes not agents, got themselves into a little bit of a muddle and all of a sudden then found that they haven't got time to do what's been requested of them. The The contract times are coming up quickly and they don't know what to do. And I think, again, it's just because there's this, there is this, what can I say, that there's this momentum at the moment for people to be out here, which is fantastic. And a lot of that momentum comes from you guys as well because I can tell with the kind of emails that people send that there is this sense of urgency. And whenever there's a sense of urgency, obviously that's then when errors can be made. Can be made. Uh, and we don't want that to happen. So the first bit of advice I would say to you all is just relax about it. Just relax about it. And, and, and there's lots to do before you consider buying. Some people are ready, they want to pull the trigger, and I understand that. And we have things in place uh, for that. Uh, and Patreon is, is one of those. Thank you so much for the great support on Patreon uh, as well. I'll give that a little bit of a plug. You can see that on the uh, uh, on the internet as well. But there there is, there is sort of, like I said, this sense of urgency. And I can tell with the kind of emails I get now compared to the kind of emails I got before. I would say things are in a little bit of a boom, but just don't make don't make the errors just always look at these things that i'm going to show you now because in my opinion these are these are quite important so this sounds ridiculous to say how am i going to do this so what do i mean about how how am i going to do it are you actually going to be here for the signing are you actually going to be coming back for the signing um what am i comfortable with are you comfortable with letting somebody else do things for you? These are all questions that you need to ask because if not, you'll be thinking, well, I'm only there for one week, so I've got to get everything done in one week. That is not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Do you think that you'd be better looking around the area rather than just looking at properties? Be honest with who you're working with. So looking at these points to get when, – when I say how am I going to do this – the one of the, the the biggest things that people seem to do is come out here, sign contracts straight away, then go back to wherever they're coming from. And it's mainly people from the states, and unfortunately, Canadians can't buy at the moment. But hopefully, hopefully that will change in in a couple of years. Which, by the way, I'm hoping to get an update from my notary as to there's something going around about villages under ten thousand. It's still not been. Nobody's done any, as far as I'm aware, uh, yet, but there may be some news for Canadians coming soon. But it tends to be people that's come from far away that sign um, documents that then the time starts to tick. And I don't know why people do that, to be honest with you, because it can really cause you problems because people are sending deposits and sending a few thousand you know, to wherever and putting deposits down on properties and then all of a sudden thinking, right, okay, well, I need to do this, 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 and this. And the problem is, is the estate agents that they're working with, which is no disrespect to them, but it's not their job to organize all these things. It's not their job to organize translators, to organize even the notary, that will have a preferred notary, to maybe organize geometers, to organize your tax code, to organize your power of attorney. There's all these things to do and some of the agents won't even know how to do that for people coming from overseas. But again, that's not their job. I don't know about anywhere else, but in the UK, an estate agent sells properties. That's it. That's all they need to do. They don't have to do anything else. That's not what they're, that's not what they're there for. They're there to advertise a property and get a commission 
for that property. And that's exactly the same here. Now, obviously, if you're dealing with companies that are used to dealing with overseas buyers and all the rest of it, there should be more help at hand. But there's lots of people that are coming out and signing documents that they don't understand and then contacting people later. And the problem is then is, is you could have you'd be on this ticking clock that you're you're due to do something within two or two or three weeks or a month that you just can't do. So people think, okay, power of attorney, that's easy. Go to a notary where I am in the US or wherever you are. But it's not just about that. Then it needs an apostle stamp. Because notaries, I understand, in the US and in Canada, I think, um, they're sort of, certainly in the US, they seem to be in every bank and everything else. But that's not enough just for the notary to stamp and say, okay, you're you, your partner's your partner, send that off to Italy. Because as soon as that document leaves the US or wherever it's coming from in the world, it's no longer valid. So it needs the apostle stamp. To have the apostle stamp in the UK, we send it to the... What's the word, Tony? Can't remember. He's, you should see him. He's half asleep on the chair. Um, uh, we send it to the the government body that I remember shortly is is telling me that no, not the embassy. No, no. Anyway, it's the Secretary of State uh, in the US and uh, and the UK. It's another word that I can't remember. But anyway, you need to get the apostle stamp from them. And some places it can take a week. Some places it's going to be a month. But all of these things, you know, you don't know. And then once that um, once that document comes back to Italy, then you need a translator to be able to translate it from Italian to, um, uh, sorry, from English to Italian. So you've got all of these things to think about that is not the job of the estate agent. So what you need to be saying to yourself is, how am I going to do this? What is my plan? And have I got people in place that can take care of all of these things for me? So there may seem like simple things that you think, I'll just sort out when I get home. And we have a brilliant system in place for people that want to remote buy. We know it's a five-step process and we, we do it because that's what we do all the time. We're not a state agent, so we don't take commission. We take, the, um, we take a, a service charge, if you like, to help people get this over the line. But to be fair to a state agent, it's not them that, that should be doing that. Um, this is down to yourselves. So be honest to who you're working with what I'm meaning by that is tell them what your situation is. If you're not ready to buy yet, if you're not ready to buy, why look around properties? I get so many emails that say, we're really good, you know, to go around the area and see a few properties. You know, I can understand people sort of wanting to have a little bit of a nose and all the rest of it, but it is, it's not really much good for you that, that's, you know, this. I can understand, for instance, the tours that we do, that's designed for people like that, for people that want to come out and see the area. Maybe they're not ready for another year. There was a few people on the tour that said, it's been a fantastic tour. I'm not ready yet. It's going to be in about a year's time, but now I know where I want to buy. And that's what it is all about, rather than coming out and, and spending all your time looking at properties that are not going to be available once uh, once you're once you're ready. Um, so like I said, it's better to be honest with the people that you're working with so so you can tell them the truth. You're going to get more respect from them, and they're going to help you more along the along the path. Uh, Steph is saying, we just spent three weeks driving across a brute and fell in love. Do you work with Talia uh, Codson and Capistrello? I love Capistrello views and natural surrounds, but the town seems a bit run down. I've never been to Capistrello, to be honest with you. Talia Codson? Uh, or Cotso, is it? Or, I can't remember. Uh, I've been to, and I'm looking to try and work with somebody. Uh, it's, it's Talia Cotso, I'm sure, uh, in that area. So I don't have anything at the moment, but I will let you know. Um, another thing to watch for when you're preparing who you're seeing, this is really important. This is really important, especially with the number of YouTube channels that's out at the moment showing properties off, which is all fine. And, and I, you know, I think it's great that people are getting on board with this and it seems to be getting the the, the balls really rolling with with some of these uh, companies doing this which is all fine but when it comes to the business when it comes to doing the business and that property that you see on a video becoming yours that's a whole different set of rules a whole different set of rules because people need to be registered so the basic things to look out for does the business have an even number Blocked again. Look, uh, what is an even an even number is a VAT number. So every business has to have a VAT number or an even number, even if even if they are not um, charging you VAT, they still have to have an even number because there's certain um, 
the government has done certain things now where uh, it's, it's a different type of tax regime if you like to help businesses a little bit more um where they don't have to charge vat but you still have to have a vat number an even number that's like our business like my business my wife we're both separately registered um but we don't have to charge vat because we're on a certain a uh, certain regime that means that we don't have to do that but we still have to have a vat number and we still have to show that number so it's on our website it has to be on there so that's these this is really important because again when you look at comments from people and you look at emails from people and you think well how did you get into this this sort of situation that you're in now where nobody's nobody's translating anything and documents are good you paid a deposit and when you when you look into it it's often because they've they've looked at certain channels and things like that which which are great as i say it's all great but use them purely for what they are which is just for information purposes which is just just to sit and enjoy the video because as i said when it comes down to it you need people that are registered properly see where people are based it seems a strange one but if they're not based in Italy, and they're based out of Italy. What sort of not guarantees, but what you know? What why are they not based in Italy? What you just need to understand the story. Who's in Italy? Because there has to be somebody here. Um, you know, there must be somebody here doing things. So if somebody's based out of the country, are they getting a commission? Which is fine. That can happen. Uh, how how is the arrangement working? You know, we're quite clear on what we say about how our arrangements are working because we're not a state agent. As I say we offer services, but we have a state agents that work with us. So Domenico is an estate agent. Claudio is an estate agent. Enos is a, an estate agent, all registered for themselves. And we make it clear to say we do not collect a commission from you. We, we, we collect service charges from you. And our estate agents do not charge you a commission because that is the agreement that we have with them. So it's quite easy to understand, but we're still registered in Italy. We still raise invoices. We still have even numbers and everything else here in Italy. But it's, understand, it's understanding how it all works. How does it work if you're contacting somebody that's based in the UK? How, is it, how does it work if you're contacting somebody that you've seen on a YouTube channel? You go onto their website. There's no mention of any VAT numbers. Maybe there's just a mobile number, which is fine. People can do that. Maybe there's no address. Maybe there's... There's just questions to be asked, and especially when it comes to the VAT number, because that is a, I say, every business should have one. So, you know, ask these people, and is the, is the VAT number registered to you, just so you can understand who's involved and who's not involved. It sounds, sounds like I'm making out as if everybody's sort of out to do something. I'm, I'm not doing that. It's just good practice to do that. Understand what these different sites are doing and all the rest of it. Um, then also you've got, if, if they're estate agents, what is their REA number? This is really important. This is where they're registered at the local chamber of commerce. So estate agents will have this REA number. If they don't have one, it means that they're not estate agents. If they're asking for a commission and they're acting as estate agents, they need to be registered. But all of this will be on their websites. And I'm sure that every legal estate agent out there will be happy if you ask them for their details. First of all, I'm sure it will be on their website. But if it's not, they will be more than happy because they're, they're happy to show off to say, look, yes, I am registered. You know, we're proud of the work that we do and how we're registered. So we're happy to give our credentials. And that's the same for estate agents as well. Those that are not um, not showing anything, ask the question because there's, there's, something, there's something not right. Tammy's saying, what if we find a house in a different area? Do we contact that agent or we do contact you and let you know so you can contact the agent first? We did used to do that, Tammy where we would contact the agent first. But to be honest with you, it was it was just getting too much. We now have another service called the Lean On Me service where we will work uh, alongside estate agents and that kind of thing. Um, if it's in Abruzzo, you can send me the details if you like. We will look. But it was getting to the point where you're sort of trying to grab something from everybody and then time too much time passes and 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 people were losing out so we we do a slightly different service uh, now i so said if you go if you go into the website you'll see the pdf guides on there um quickly want to touch on this because I, I want to go on to maps and things like that shortly um i just want to we, we have talked about this before but be open-minded rustic can be awkward ugly can be beautiful 
saying nothing, Tony. Um, <laughs> I don't mean it. Uh, be open-minded. Rustic can be awkward. Ugly can be beautiful. What do I mean about that? People would say say to me, I love a, a stone property that's, you know, really nice old stone and all of this and with big windows and opening out onto usually stone and big windows and things like that don't go together because the way that they're they're, they're, they're constructed if you like they 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 tend to be smaller openings and you can't just say well i'll just open the whole thing and put rsjs in there to, to to strengthen it that's not how it works here in italy you can't do that so sometimes the ugliest looking property can be the ones that have got the best i don't know the best views because they're looking at the nice properties um they can be the ones that have lots of terraces because the 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 newer builds did tend to have lots of terraces and that kind of thing so even though the vast majority of people when you when you put uh when you get an old property an old stone property you put that on the internet everybody wants to know about that everybody wants to see it everybody loves it everybody thinks that's Italy, and it is and i understand all of that and then you get the poor little ugly duckling that that's got the best view that's got the, the the a roof terrace that's just unbelievable, and but nobody chooses it because it's not the Italian thing. Try and, and be open minded because sometimes it's the same when we bought our property here. Um, ours was the ugly duckling, big style. Uh, I think I've mentioned this before. When we when we came to look at this property and we got home and we said to all our friends and family, look, we found this property. We're going to buy this property. Take a look at this. People were like looking at the photographs and they were sort of like. Hmm. <laughs> that was the reaction that we got from people because people didn't understand what it was like till they got here. And then they thought, now I can understand. So don't rule out too many things. Uh, and last but not least, book your viewings well in advance. I'm having to turn so many people down recently and I hate doing it. But unfortunately, the people book in well, well in advance and it's just impossible to, to keep up with the numbers. So if, if you're planning on coming out in a week's time, two weeks' time, three weeks' time, the chance of you of getting uh, getting availability is quite slim. Maybe not with everybody, but with a lot of places, they will struggle. And avoid Christmas, avoid Easter, and avoid August. It sounds strange, but holidays are precious to people here. And I know coming from a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week society like the UK, I'm probably... 28 hours a day and nine days a week uh in in the us and, and other places this seems strange but italians are still very very traditional and rightly so because it's a big part of the culture it's a big part of why it's such a fantastic place so book your viewings well in advance and avoid these holidays because that is really 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 important okay so uh kelly minimum income required if you're a foreigner buying a property in italy it depends if you're talking about becoming resident but i will i will go through that uh, at another time tony what i need to do what i haven't done is i haven't sent domenico his link so i may look a little bit strange at the minute because i'm just as we speak sending domenico otherwise he's not going to be able to uh he's not going to be able to come in uh let me just send him this link because he will be coming in very shortly. And I'm also going to send it. No doubt he's been telephoning me, which he which he has. We'll see if he comes in. We'll see if he gets the uh, see if he gets the message. Just this is very professional, isn't it? But uh, but there you go. That's just what's happened today. Uh let me just send him a message. Domenico ti ho mandato un messaggio adesso. Facciamo in 10 minuti. Okay. Very professional at that, isn't it? See, there's no cover-up, so just tell you how it is. Okay, so remember that because, like, for instance, this Easter, Easter's huge. It's a huge, huge celebration. People, families all get together. Um, they come from all I know it's a huge celebration everywhere, but in particular uh, in, in, uh, in, in Italy and August too. Um, EVA number, does the government do any vetting of the applicant before issuing the EVA? No, anybody can, well, you have to fill out the forms and everything else. You've got to provide all your ID. Yes, it's not just something that you can just sort of do and get an EVA number and then just put it on a website. No, you've got to, you've got to open a tax account with the tax office or straight away, the eyes of the tax man are on you so uh, so yeah it's not it's not just something you can go, sort of go on a website and then just then then off you go okay i want to show you a little bit of map work now so we are talking about 
a uh, little bit of map work. Does that make sense? We are talking about a brood sort at the moment. So let me turn on turn on the pen, it says here. Let me change the colour. What colour shall we have? Let's have blue. Okay, so what I also want to tell you about is when you are choosing a place, places to, to view. There's so many people that see um properties on the website and they say that looks amazing want to buy there and then the, the again a lot of people contact me even the other day somebody contacted me about um an apartment that's still available in palombara which is the town where i am and they said we want to remote buy we've seen the video looks amazing want to remote buy and then during the their email or, or one email down they said uh um it's really important that they've got good access to a train station and 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 things like that now when somebody says good access to a train station what do they mean do they mean they want to be able to drive to one in 10 15 minutes or 20 minutes can i expand on the truth so to speak can i say you know somebody said to me is there a bus service in palombara if i said yes i wouldn't be lying because there is and I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying everybody is going to tell you things that you want to hear, but there's going to be a lot that tell you that things that you want to hear. Because if you said to me, is there a bus service in Palombaro? And I said, yes, then that that's the truth. But it's not going to be the kind of bus service that you need if you're relying solely on public transport. And we've done this a lot because so many people need good public transport. So what I want to show you on this map, I want to give you a few pointers of where you should be looking and a, and a quick brief rundown on, on how Abruzzo works. And hopefully, so this is pretty much all of Abruzzo. I mean, it does, um, let me just see if I've got this pen still working yet. Um, so it, it is missing some down at, down at the bottom here. And it's also missing a little bit from the top, but this pretty much gives a, a good a good image of Abruzzo. Now, the thing to remember, Pescara, obviously here in the middle. The things I want to point out to you are main roads. Sounds strange, but motorway. This is the motorway that takes you all the way to Rome. Okay. This is a motorway at the top near Teramo that goes from the coast under the Grand Sasso, towards Aquila, and then joins up again this motorway that takes you to Rome. These are the two main motorways, but the main, main one is the Pescara one. Then you have a motorway that runs along the coastline, that runs from as far south as, as it will go to as far north. You can go to Milan, Bologna, and all the rest of it. So dead simple. That's the motorway system. Then main roads, main roads for you getting quickly inland are one here, which is one that I use a lot, one here at the bottom. Then there is one here that joins up that. And when I say main roads, they're probably not main roads com <laughs> compared to what some of you are used to, but main roads for here. Um, then we have sort of a main road. Where's the other one I wanted to come? It's not so much a main road in the middle, but I'm, I'm no, I, I would say that's roughly where the main main roads are. Now I'm going to change my pen color. What you will notice there's a lot of in between things, a lot of um, what can I say? If in particular in this area down here in the south of Abruzzo, Vasto, which is here is incredible is stunning really stunning and this area here is where you find the cheapest properties by by far i would say even though there's cheap properties in most places the reason for that is the the links are not as good um the some of the roads are not as good as you can see there's quite a, a big sort of area here in this bottom that doesn't really have even the yellow road that's this this one here if you look how windy it is on a i'm not pulling this area down i'm just telling you that the truth uh, about it um this area i live here in palombaro at the foot of the foot of the mountains and for me to get to the coast i can either follow this this line here that takes me to fossa Cessia, or the one at franca villa and that's why we chose this area because it's serviced well by all of these roads and even if you, you can see for yourselves the number of yellow roads and how they don't seem to be 
as windy. Obviously, where I am, I'm in the mountains, so it is windy here. But there's also another reasonably good road that takes you to the ski resorts along along this area here. We've also got the Mayala Mountain Range, which is all of this that's shaded. The other Grand Sasso Mountain Range is all of this here. So what I'm trying to do is show you a bit of a picture of why these properties towards the south are cheaper, and it's a lot of it is to do with the roads and why... The, the areas that do tend to be really popular are from Kieti down to down to here and sort of all of this all of this area around Lanciano and heading heading towards heading towards the mountain range hopefully you can you can all see this however what I will say even though I live in Palombar and love it here and I love towns like Casale which is here and I love towns like Faro San Martino which is here next to me Absolutely. Lanciano is a brilliant place. Um, I love all of these places, but the, the uh, public transport is good, but it's not fantastic. And it, further south you go, then it is few and far between as well, unless you go into the bigger towns. So now if we look at, how can I, let me start all of this again. So now we're talking about public transport. So, what you've got to understand is the railways here run alongside the coast. So they run pretty much alongside the motorway in this direction. And then they run from Pescara and they run in towards Rome again. That is where, if you need trains, that is where the trains run. So if you're buying in, buying anywhere else inland, so that includes around Penny, which is popular, Loreto Apertino, which is popular, if you're in my area, which is pop, really popular as well, Palombaro, Casali, all these sorts of areas, then you're purely relying on buses. The buses are okay in, in some of the bigger towns. So Penny, they're okay. Casali, they're okay. But start, as soon as you start going to the smaller towns, not as good. And same when you head further south, there is a, a huge difference between public transport. The best public transport, if, if you really are um reliant on public transport the best areas i know you're going to know what i'm going to say so before i say it go on i'll say it say it in your head but it's true are around the sulmona area and that's a fact you know you can go on to the, the 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 websites and you can see see for yourself so even the smaller towns and villages so you have Rayano here that has a train station um then you've got Corfino here, and you've got Vittorito, which is all in the same area. But even though they're small villages, they're serviced really well by buses. So, sorry, by train, by trains and buses. So anything that runs along this motorway is going to be serviced reasonably well. But in particular, the areas around Sulmona, they are serviced well. And that's a fact. Then you also have another railway that goes through uh Rayano and up into some of the into the summer some of the areas that are quite high they're actually really beautiful and that these some of these smaller areas have the advantage that the train passes and goes straight to Aquila and it also then connects up to Sulmona so even some of the smaller towns some of the towns that are like where I am in Palombaro that there's no trains pass here but if you go to a a, a town equivalent to Palombaro but in the Aquila area uh, and, and the Sulmona area in these areas, they actually have trains that pass by as well. So it is serviced really well. And then obviously heading towards uh, Avezzano, heading towards Taglio Cozzo, which is here that somebody mentioned earlier, and these sorts of areas, they're all serviced well as well by buses and trains. So the reality is when you, if public transport is really important to you, then it's not nothing to do with mountains, or if there's mountains there, the public transport. The uh, I've just seen Domenico come on now. Um, is wait is wait eagerly waiting. But when it comes to public transport, if that is really important to you, ask the questions. When don't just ask, is there a bus? Because the the danger is so many people really want for the answer to be yes. They're so desperate because they love this place. They've never been here, but they love it. They, they, they just think to themselves, this is going to be the perfect place to spend. And they ask the question, and then it's almost like they don't really want to know the, the answer because you, you just want to you listen to anything. And people say, well, I'll manage. I'll get from there to there. It's not that easy. 
It's not that easy. And some places, like here, like Palombaro, they have a bus service, but they have it runs with the kids. So you can get out at 6, 7 in the morning, you can come back 2, 3 in the afternoon. But that's it. And it's not so easy. You can manage, but if you, really, if you need good bus services and good, you need to ask the question, ask again, and ask again. Because just asking if there's a bus service, that's that's not enough. Um, is there a reason you don't focus on the coastal towns much? To be honest with you, we we don't really get asked very much because the coastal towns, they are obviously a lot of them closed down during um, during the winter time. Uh, they'll start coming to life from Easter onwards. Uh, it's not something we, we get. People tend to want to be in the countryside more. Um, obviously, there's people that sell lots of houses down there, and especially towns like Vasto. Vasto is a great place. Um, and the coast is incredible. Pe but people, the vast majority of our clients want to be within an hour or sometimes within half an hour, but not necessarily on the beach because the best countryside, for me anyway, is a little bit further inland, is the 20 minutes, the half an hour, and that kind of thing. Um, so, so yeah, that's the bit. But it's, I'm certainly not pulling the the... The, the seaside down is just that's just the reality of what people people ask us i do want to get a contact in vasto and i may well start uh start doing that the other thing that i wanted to say to people as well is when they talk about the mountains so the mountain ranges are all these shaded parts here and also here so these are the main mountain ranges now when you see i'm going to say palombar because it's a good example palombar palombar where i live is here so the, the my other mountains are just outside of my window, the huge mountain face, but we're on the sea side of the mountains. So we also get in the other direction, you get the rolling hills and the rest of it. So when people say, sometimes people will say, no, it's too close to the mountains. What you've got to understand is the mountains are very high. If you took the mountains away, we're in rolling countryside. But the thing with the mountains here, they're just all of a sudden, they're there. There's not a gradual thing. The only time where there is gradual, where you don't realize how high, how you are, is in places like, Torricella, Polini, and these sort of places. But all of all of this strip here, they're all sort of hill and with the with the backdrop of the mountains. That that's that's all I can say. You're safe in any of these any of these places. If you start going up into the mountains, there's very there's very few towns and villages actually in in the national parks. So you're not really you've got the mountains, but the villages tend to be lower. But if you are Again, look at the, the I would say anything up to six, seven hundred meters is absolutely fine. Some people will say, well, Salmona and places like that, they must be really high because you've got the mountain, but it's not, it's a valley. So you've got the, you know, it's a completely different set of scenery of, of that side of the mountain. So I'm only going through this as a quick thing, just to give you a quick idea of what Abruzzo is like. The most important thing I would say to any of you that are watching is if, if, public transport is really important to you then make sure you ask the questions because just saying yes there is a bus service is not good here we go are you ready for the next installment are you ready for the i think we're just about finished that anyway Tony. that was pretty good time in that domenico are you ready to see domenico he's quite popular on our videos and he thinks he's famous when everybody comes out uh i can see him with a smile on his face now so I'm going to bring Tony and Domenico and we're going to carry on our Domenico and Tony's tongue twisting trials and people can guess after Domenico. And I want to see if anybody gets guesses who, what film, the name of the film that this quote is from. Are you ready, everybody? Let's bring these two, two on and then we'll finish up afterwards. Let's get Tony back in place. And let's get Domenico. Buonasera. Hey, Ciao. Tommy. Ciao. Ciao, Tony. Ciao, Tommy. <laughs> Back together again. Okay. <laughs> Gruesome, twosome. Say que bella firpa, Tony. Yeah. Even Domenico is saying that he likes he likes Tony's, uh, <laughs> um, that's a new word for you, felpa. What's the felpa. word in English? Felpa. Non è bella, però è brutto. È brutto, è bella. <laughs> very, very sure. brutto. I'm sure they must talk to each other beforehand. Okay. Domenico, sei pronto? Ah, yes, yes. Allora, prima facciamo con Tony. Okay. Okay, so Tony's going to say it first. Tony, one more time. One more time. 
Glifaro un offerta che non potrà refutare. Glifaro un offerta che non potrà refutare. Bravo, Tony! He said it better the first time, Tony. Ma, ma tu hai capito, Domenico? Sì. Sì, ah, so Domenico says he's understood it, so he's the Italian one, what am I to say? Allora, I'm going to send it now to Domenico. So listen carefully, everybody, because Domenico is going to tell us in English, and then you can guess, guess, guess the film. Cinque secondi per studiare. So he's got five <laughs> seconds to study it. Oggi è difficile. Non è difficile. He said it's hard. He said it's difficult. I think you understood that, didn't you? But this is also a little bit American. So, questo non, non è, sì, è inglese, però c'è un parole americano, diciamo, because there's sort of a, an American word in this. Sei pronto? Yes. Okay. Yes. Everybody, get ready to guess. And here we go. Domenico, bye. I'm gone, make him an offer. He can't refuse. Bravo. Bravo. Let's wait. Let's see who gets it first. On altra vault. <laughs> I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Who's got? Who's got? We've got one. We've got one. Oh, I'm gonna say no, no, no. Here we go. Oh no, we've got somebody else. Oh. The first is Scott, the Godfather. No. <laughs> Can't believe you got it <laughs> again. Oh, yeah. Bravo. Oh, Scott was that was Scott the first one? Yeah, it was. Scott was the no, first Brian. one. Sorry? No, oh, it was. Yeah, sorry. My yeah, Brian, Brian was second. Brian came in with the Godfather. Then we've got Friday. Very good. Few people have guessed, but the winner tonight is Scott the Godfather. Bravo, Domenico. Bravo, Bravo Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Ci vediamo domani. Yes. It's even, more it's even more amazing. even more amazing if you just got it from mine. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Ciao Domenico, ci vediamo domani. Ciao Domenico. 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 Thank you very much. <laughs> Why do we do these things? It's a good laugh though, isn't it? Do you enjoy these things? Do you, you don't mind us all having a... Kelly said it was Don Corleone. That's 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 correct. <laughs> we don't mind having a bit of a laugh, do we? And we're learning. See, you've learned a new Italian word today. Felpa. Can you remember what that is? It means a, I can't remember what the word. You know that ridiculous top that Tony's wearing? It's one of those. So that, that's your new. In fact, we need to learn one word a week. So it's going to take us a while before you're fluent, but I'm up to up for sticking to it as long as you guys are okay well that's our little moment of uh, of madness uh, but we do enjoy doing that but to be serious with everybody uh as we've said tonight just just what don't be stressed out don't be thinking i need to buy i need to buy i need to buy at all costs and everything else start to plan things and you'll be surprised how much uh how much less stress you will be under because believe me, the last thing you want to do is be contacting me and saying, I've got well this time to do this, 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 and this. And then all of a sudden they say it's going to take such a long time to uh to do your 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 power of attorney, or it's going to take such a long time, or we need to find uh a, a, a translator and that kind of thing. You're just gonna stress yourselves out. So if you are ready to buy and you're good to go, ask the questions. If something's on your mind, ask the questions. Don't think. That I'm, uh, what was that, Dave? You're also the godfather of, of property, was that? Um, don't think that by asking questions that somebody else is all of a sudden going to be coming and taking the property off you and that kind of thing, because you don't want to, you don't want to get into that kind of, uh, that kind of battle. And hopefully you're going to find somebody that's going to give you the time to, once you've made your decision, to then ask the right questions to be able to move on. And the other big thing is the public transport thing. Just because if you're not sure, if you're not sure and you found something that you absolutely love and you think this is the one for me, but I need to make sure it's so important that I have public transport. If you're not sure and you can't find the information on the uh, uh, on the website, then send us an email. We're happy to, to, to respond. Okay, guys.
thank you so so much for joining us again it's easter weekend so i am going to be a very happy person from thursday through friday saturday sunday monday and tuesday possibly i'm having a day off as well but we are still doing the tuesday night webinar the tuesday night live stream is going to be the big massive q a so get all of your questions together all of your questions together every anything that you can think of even if it sounds ridiculous doesn't matter we're like a family on here aren't we Everybody can should be able to write things on here. We get a few people that write some nasty things and the rest of it, but that's that's unfortunately that's the world we live in. But for the rest of us that are in this to find out as much information as possible, that's what these sessions are for. So make sure you use next Tuesday wisely and ask the questions. For those of you who are um, on the April tour, I will be getting in touch with you very very soon uh to create the whatsapp group so by i'm going to say by wednesday of next week all of you are going to get emails we're going to have the whatsapp group and we're going to be getting prepared for the april tour which is only a few weeks away as well which uh, which uh, i can't believe is passing around so so quickly okay guys M happy i was going to say merry easter happy easter to everybody um what was that monica saying thank you i'll give your size i make more t-shirt monica i'm sure it will fit I'm sure it will fit. And thank you so much for the very kind, uh, very kind gesture. Okay, everybody, happy Easter. Have a fantastic one. Uh, I may put a few uh, comments on. On I may even do. I might even do a live actually, if I can. If I can do that. If I can connect to my internet and show you what how we celebrate uh, how we celebrate Easter over here. I, I may do something this weekend. I'll do. I'll do what I can or a little video. And I don't know. We'll think of something. I'm sure. Have a great time, everybody, and I will see you again next Tuesday for the big, massive Q&A. Have a fantastic time.